Hi there and welcome to the 17th episode of Lancet Property Podcast. Today we're looking into how to find more about living in Spain, whether you're already here or before you come. Here in Valencia it's been a mad, hectic week. As is usual this time of year, Monday was a holiday in Valencia. Go figure, plenty of holidays in Spain. Then on Tuesday we had five signings for properties on the same morning. That was just crazy busy with buyers, sellers, notaries, lawyers and little old me moving from room to room signing, transferring money and congratulating people on their purchases and sales. Tuesday afternoon was spent with all of our team showing clients around and preparing visits for the rest of the week and things have just continued as crazily for the rest of the week. We also listed a couple of rentals from our clients and have lots of interest in them both and hopefully both will have people in from the 1st of May. Of course, after writing about spring having arrived and looking forward to the long hot summer, the rain came back on Wednesday and as I record this on Thursday, it's miserable and wet again, although it does seem to be clearing up a bit. Anyway, today's podcast has our usual listener questions, some news from Valencia, and in the main part we talk about how you can find out more about living in Spain if you don't speak Spanish. We talk about which podcasts to follow to give you more information, which YouTube channels, blogs, social media accounts, and even some newspapers. Yes, they still exist. Firstly though, the questions, and today we have a bumper crop of questions. The first one is about schools and is from Joel. Joel asked, I was quite informed and entertained by your article about the English language schools in Valencia. Um, you can find it in the, in the notes, of course. I really appreciated your candour. You mentioned the overall quality of the Valencia public school system, but I wondered if you knew of many expats who went the public school route with children who weren't fluent in Spanish and what their experiences were. For context, my kids will be five and seven at the time of the move. Well, Joe, the truth is that until a couple of years ago, we had a lot of clients going down the state school route, especially for kids of the age yours will be. However, with the move to greater emphasis on Valenciano in the classroom in the state sector, many parents have decided they will put their kids through the international system, where the emphasis on Valenciano is a lot less. Kids still learn it, but it's only taught at a level to gain access to Valencian University, where a minimum level is expected. Of those who sent the kids to Spanish state schools in the past, there were very few who had problems. And I can't think of any who had a problem starting from a very young age. Some kids didn't fit in well when they started as teenagers, for example, because they effectively spent the first year at school learning Spanish and not being able to study at a higher level. Apart from that, most people were fine. The next question is from Mark and it's about rentals. Mark asked if it is going to be difficult to find a rental that will take them, as many people on forums and Facebook etc seem to suggest that it's difficult to find landlords who will accept foreigners as tenants. Okay, the answer unfortunately is yes, it's true. And that's why we've put in place our rental service to get you past that first step. You can see the link in the show notes of course. June asked us something that had to do with nominative determinism. Is it too early to book our visits for June? Okay, June. And the answer, of course, is no. Just let us know your dates and we'll put you in the calendar and one of my colleagues will be in contact to tease out what you are looking for and get everything ready for you to have the best chance of finding a property that suits you. As an example, we had somebody this week coming over from the States in mid-May. They will only be here for two full working days. Americans don't get many holidays. Monday the 16th and Tuesday the 17th of May. We have everything set up already for their orientation day on the Monday morning. We talked about this in episode 13 of the podcast a few weeks ago, and of course, that's in the show notes. In the afternoon, we'll start with visits according to their requirements that they've sent us in the first step questionnaire, which again, you can find in the show notes. The longer time you give us beforehand and the longer you spend here once you get here, the better chance we have of finding you the perfect place. So two days is a big ask but we'll do our best. We were asked on Twitter this week about recommendations for places to eat out in Valencia, and as usual, my answer was, yep, we have a blog post about that. Soon to be updated with more tasty possibilities, and of course, you can find it in the show notes. So let's move on to finding out more about Spain. If you are looking for something about Valencia to help you with ideas for living here, moving here and property here, then of course you can go to our blog, 
website, podcasts, etc. However, we realize that we cannot cover everything in life or in Spain, and you may need more. So today we're looking at places where you may be able to find out more about Spain in English. We're going to start with podcasts, and as we're on a podcast, that seems the logical place to start. There are various types of podcasts that may be interesting to you. Some are very wide in their scope and others more niche, but here are some of our favourites. The best known is probably When in Spain by Paul Burge, which is in the top 1% of podcasts in the world apparently. Very good subjects covering the whole of Spain with excellent guests. Have a listen to the episode with Nick Lloyd about the walking Civil War museum and tour in Barcelona. It's very good. The next that is worth a listen is Spain to Go by Daniel Welch. Take a listen to the Spanish profanity episode as you can never speak Spanish well unless you know how to swear. And that's not according to me, that's according to Nobel Prize winner Camilo José Cela. Thirdly, we go into specialities. And one of the specialities in Spain, of course, is football. Um, the Spanish football podcast by Sid Lowe and Phil Kittrimelides is an excellent weekly roundup of everything to do with Spanish football and is actually in the top 0.5% of podcasts in the world with its own Patreon program too for tons of extra content. Also bear in mind La Liga Lowdown and El Tell and John's La Liga Weekly which cover the same ground too but are also excellent. Moving on to YouTube. We have a YouTube channel of course and most of the stuff we put on it at the moment are our podcasts. But we also put up property videos, drone shots and more every now and again. However, today we're recommending a few YouTube channels to do with Valencia and Spain as a whole. Now, you know James Blake from one of our earlier podcasts and James has one of the best YouTube channels out there and it revolves around food and visiting places in Spain. Of course, in our interview we talked about that but it's well worth looking into his channel. The link is in the show notes of course. Life in Spain has a decent channel, mostly focused around Malaga, but with plenty of walking tours around the city and other areas. Again, in the show notes, you'll find all of these links. The Valencia Tourist Board produces lots of good-looking videos in various languages about Valencia, and you should take a look at that. And Antonetta made a good series of videos about Valencia, but has now moved on to Istanbul. The videos remain, however, so take a look at that. Down in Malaga, Lisa Sadlia continues to put out excellent content about Malaga and moving to Spain on her channel. And if you want a good laugh, then Keith Cooks is excellent. Keith is an English guy living in Madrid. Blogs. Now, many years ago, the blogosphere was huge. It's not so big these days because social media sort of got in the way of it. But we've still got a blog for our property page and we find it very useful and so does everyone else. Anyway, many years ago, I got sick of the negativity about Spain and I started up a Facebook group of writers and bloggers about Spain, Wabas, as it was known. We helped each other share articles and more and even got the hashtag Spain is trending around once with a concerted effort about all the positives about Spain. Over the years, we had meetings, helped each other in business and more. But bit by bit, it withered as the blogosphere became less relevant and social media became more relevant. There are still some excellent blogs out there written by members of Wabas. And here are some of the many that may interest you to give you a wider appreciation of what's happening in and around Spain. Of course, I recommend my blog, which is valenciaproperty.com backslash new. But apart from that, Molly Pickavy writes well about Granada on pickavy.com. Russ Pierce writes his blog Anything But Paella. That's Paella, of course. Anythingbutpaella.com about his journeys around the country. There are others too. But the blogosphere is not what it was anymore. What can be written has been written, perhaps. Or can we continue producing content forevermore? Well, we'll try. In social media, uh, well, social media profiles abound of people in Spain talking about living here, and there are plenty of our clients who post their stuff on Twitter, Instagram, and more when they were in Valencia. You get some great photos of Valencia from Instagram. However, I'll let you find out more yourself. A good start would be to go to my Twitter page, that's Greyhunt, G-R-A-H-U-N-T, and see who I am following. Lots of Spain goodness in there. I also have a list of people talking about Spain in there, so follow the list as well if you want to find out more about Spain. As regards news outlets, I'm not going to say newspapers anymore, as most people don't get newspapers. But there are excellent sources of information inside Spain in English that keep you updated with what is going on in the country. El País in English, Spain in English, the British Embassy, many more, post interesting updates to further dig down into what's happening. There are local and national, let's say, papers that give you more on a local, regional or national level, and the best is probably the local Spain. 
although it does require a subscription for many articles and deeper journalism. Within Valencia, the listing site 24-7 Valencia has some excellent reviews of restaurants, clubs, days out and more, and Valencia Life has some great articles about what's going on in Valencia. Also, Catherine Dolan at the Valencia Report keeps you up to date with the latest news from Valencia. Avoid the olive press with all of your being as it's a constant stream of tabloid bullshit. Anyway, finally for today, our recommendations. We have recommended a lot of video channels in the recommendations today, and you can find them in the show notes, of course. Remember, Life in Spain, Tourism Valencia, Antonetta, Keith Cooks, Lisa Sadlia, and of course, our own channel. In our recommended articles, we've mentioned various ones. We detail our rental service to avoid the problems of foreigners on trying to rent. Our first step post is where you get to tell us exactly what you're looking for. And also we have the tips for eating out in Valencia. Again, all of the links are in the show notes. And then this week, we're doing some recommended blogs as well. Obviously, our blog is recommended. Anything but Paella, Picavi, The Valencia Report, 24-7 Valencia, The Local, Valencia Life, El Pais in English, Spain in English. And of course, I'm not leaving a link for the Olive Press because the owner is a bit of a... Anyway, the recommended podcast we've got is our recommended podcast from a few weeks ago about orientation days and what we do on them. And again, the link is in the show notes. As regards all the other podcasts we mentioned, we mentioned Paul Burgess, When in Spain, the Spanish Football Podcast, La Liga Loca, Spain to Go and La Liga Weekly. They're all in the show notes. You should always look at the show notes. So anyway, that's today's podcast. It's not as long as many of the other podcasts, but you've got a lot of reading up and homework to do after this. It's not as long as many of the other podcasts, but it gives you a lot of reading up to do. And hopefully you will listen to us next week as well, when we'll be talking more about living in Valencia. Hope you enjoy this. If you need to get in touch with us, remember it's information at valencia-property.com or you can send me a WhatsApp on 0034 and say, I want in, and I'll put you on our list for receiving all the information that we send out on a regular basis. Of course, you can go to our homepage, valencia-property.com, or you can go to the blog at valencia-property.com backslash new to find out what's going on in the Valencia property market at the moment. We hope to hear from you soon. If you have any questions for the podcast, remember you can send us a voice note by WhatsApp, or you can send us an email to information at valencia-property.com and we'll endeavour to answer your question to the best of our abilities. We'll usually get it right, but sometimes if we can't answer the question, we'll find someone who can. Anyway, until the next time, we look forward to you listening to us again in the next episode of the Valencia Property Podcast. The music in this episode is by Ghost Drones. It's from their album Machines of the Earth and this track is called Storm. You have chosen wisely. Goodbye!